Let me bang you. I do bang. let you bang. I hey, let me bang you, Jesus. Let me bang. Let you bang. Let me bang. Let me bang. Let me bang. Let me bang. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Hey, welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted podcast. Me, Adam Hunter. I'm here with Bill Dawes, the man, the myth, the legend, the brown belt uh, jiu-jitsu. Um, did you just get your brown belt, or did you, you have for a while? No, it, well, you know, because the COVID was kind of pushed, I was, I was supposed to test about it you know, like a year ago, but I got it for about like uh, four months. Now, do you, do you do any striking? Huh? <laughs> you know, I used to I used to train at Legends with Carl Parisian. Do you remember Carl Parisian? Of course, that I remember. Wacky Carl. Armenian. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I was I decided to do it right next to a train track, Adam, just to make this really convenient. Perfect. Should I mute this for a second? <laughs> I mean, why, not, why don't you just go on the track? Just lay down on the track. Uh, just for all you guys who want to do, who think that podcasting is easy, uh, try talking to someone who's on a train track. Um, so uh, uh, I, I was going to do a terrible Matt Hughes joke, but I'm not going to do it because um, uh, what's the point of that? That would be mean. I'm happy Matt's doing better, by the way. Matt's fucking kicking ass uh, and recovering. I'm surprised he's not signed by Triller now. I'm surprised Jake Paul hasn't called out Matt Hughes because people that won't even know they got hit by a train and he couldn't walk would be like, dude, he just knocked out Matt Hughes. Anyway, uh, so what were we saying? The brown belt? It's the longest train in the world. I'm in like an old timey historic town. The longer the train, train track is like, period. It's a longer train than on Magana, actually. Uh, Angela Magana did not have a train as long as her. Um, <laughs> So, uh, like, we don't believe in houses anymore, or, like, apartments, or just doing it in a, even a car. Now we're at, like, we were at a, gym, a comedy club last well, week. I was doing a show in uh, Addison Improv, which you love, right? I've never been there. You've never been there? No. Oh, they would love you, man. This fucking train is the longest train. Anyway, so I'm driving back to Austin, and uh, I was like, oh, fuck. Can't find a Starbucks. I had to find an old historic village with Wi-Fi. Awesome. This is this, again, this is not going to be this is not going to be frustrating at all, uh, especially uh, since we have John Dodson as well as Mason Jones, who's going to be uh, skyping or uh, zooming in from Wales. So uh, this is this is going to be great. Um, all right. I'll just so, mute it when he's on. It'll, I've never seen a train this fuck long, but uh, I'm also Welsh, so I'd like to hear what he has to say. Oh, I'm gonna mute this. All right. Oh, please, mute the whole podcast. Just turn it off, actually. Fucking, why, why do we, just, you know what, everyone turn off the podcast and just, everyone imagine what we, what we would have said. And then that'll be the podcast. Just think about, just listen, just think what will we have said, and then that, there's your podcast. Um, all right, is that, the train still going? This fucking train's really going? Oh, my God. All right, so you, like, when you were in your car and you were pulling over, did you think maybe I shouldn't be near a fucking train railroad track? Like maybe I'll, I don't know, was, was the, uh, uh, the landing strip fucking taken? Were we going to go where the planes land? Was that actually, or maybe yeah. a, a fucking well? Is there, is there a, why don't we go on the border while people are sneaking in? <laughs> the and, airport was too far away. Yeah. I was looking for a Starbucks and it was like, oh, there's a Starbucks 0.3 miles away. And I'm like, I'll go to the next one. And the next one's 50 minutes away. Uh, so this is my only option. So, all right, a couple things. So you were going to get your black belt, and then now you – and then striking, right? You used to train with Carl Parisian. Yeah, so I was basically a beginner at Legends on North La Brea, when it, the old location. Do you ever train yeah. there? Yeah, all the time. That's where I started. That's where I trained with Alan Jubon and Connor Hewn. I used to yeah, coach yeah, wrestling yeah. there. Yeah. And Carl was just like, okay, guys, put on some gloves and just spar. So I like like five fingers. I got like a broken nose and a black eye chipped tooth just because he had no rules. He was like, ah, just do takedowns, a little like light ground and pound. <laughs> and later when I started really training, I was like, that was the most irresponsible shit in the world. That's crazy. You want to hear something funny, something similar. So Mayhem Miller, by the way, uh, who 
a lot of people have tuned in because they were fans of Mayhem, and then when we had a falling out, they left, but then people stayed. So if you, if you stayed in the, uh, because you liked the podcast, even though the Mayhem thing happened, I, I appreciate that. Uh, he will be coming back, uh, whatever he wants. I don't want to force him. It's, you know, he's, he's, you know, when you get out of jail for a year, it, it, yeah. there's an adjustment period. Um, so, but anyway, but he called me up and he's like, Hey, I want to, do you have wrestling mats? Cause I want to, I want to coach kids. I don't have any mats anymore because I gave them away, uh, when we, when we moved. So I called my buddy Ian Harris, you know Ian Harris. Yeah, I know he is. I may not know him personally, but I know he is. Yeah. Ian's a really funny comic, really good guy. Also like a great MMA trainer. Like he's actually, he trains a bunch of fighters, a bunch of pros and he, he owns a gym called fight science. And I sent Jay Moore over there. Uh, I, uh, he hits me up. I've sent a lot of fighters over there, a lot of wrestlers. He'll hit me up and be like, hey, I, I need some wrestling. I got a guy wrestling, a D1 guy. So that's the guy. And Ian's, my, Ian's like my guy. He's a really nice guy. So I, I tell him, I say, hey, Mayhem. I call him up. I said, listen, Jason just got out of jail. He needs a, kind of a fresh start. He needs, he needs a gym. He just was in Orange County. Now he has a couple guys he wants to train. No problem. So I, Jason's been like, training there the last three days. He's been coaching over there. He's been coaching, but the first day he goes to like the, the uh, pro practice to, to help with like with the pros. And he told me some guy just walked in and got the wrong class, like some rugby player, um, never fought before, never trained before, and decided to stay for the pro practice. <laughs> and Jason, he came in literally off the street. So Jason like has been in jail. He walks to a gym. Now Mayhem Miller's coaching uh, and he stays. And Jason was like, dude, the guy threw around half the kids, and, but he didn't know what he was doing. He just literally, he like knew he was a rugby player. So he was just throwing people. Um, but Ian said he came back. He's like, yeah, this one guy came, went to the wrong practice, and he had two black eyes, but he loves it. Um, and Jason, so he, he wants to stay, but he's like, he's not letting him stay unless he actually takes a class or two. He can't just sh show up. It's not a fight club. Um, yeah. but, uh, but that was just making me fucking laugh. It was just hard. It was hard because, you know, yesterday I went to uh, see, it's been really hard not coaching. Like, first of all, oh, I, moved, yeah. I moved an hour and a half from where I used to coach. I don't know if I, I'm even going to coach anyway, because I, I got a kid. It takes me, I, before it was like 45 minutes each way, and I'm not getting paid much. You know, it's a, you know, like 20, 30 bucks a session or something. It's just, I yeah. do feel like the, the, the karma and spirituality. Yeah. And coaching. And I can about, yeah. Getting me out of the fucking this crazy part of Hollywood, giving back. You know, there's a lot of reasons I do it. It's a lot of, a lot of selfish reasons because I get something out of it. But also, like, yeah, get your wife for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I also got like a text yesterday from a kid who um who went undefeated this year as a freshman. He was like my first three time uh, league champion, and he said to me, he's like, Coach, I didn't get to thank you. It means so much to have you cheer me on. Uh, you know, you made me who I am today. And thanks wow. for to cover it. I just know that when I'm in high school, you'll always be my favorite coach and my second dad. Like, cause this that's kid, amazing. You, Adam, that's really amazing, man. Seriously. Yeah, I'm not even sure I should even read it on this podcast, but it, 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 but it meant so much. It meant like, yeah. I mean, like I was like crying in therapy today talking about it. Like, like, uh, that's why you do it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. amazing. So, um, and I, 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 anyway, I watched the match, a bunch of the high school kids won and they came in second in the league. They would have won. But they had to give away four forfeits because of COVID, which God, like is that. like you're giving away 24 points, um, yeah. which is which is which is crazy. We had one kid though. It was like when I was coaching, we had one kid who I remember we had a match and we were like two months into the season. And Connor Hewn was my other coach. Me and Connor were coaching, and this kid shows up and he's like, "I'm here for the match," and I never seen this kid before. And I was like, "Does anyone know who this kid is?" Um, and someone's like, "I don't think he goes to our school." Uh, and then fucking crazy, <laughs> crazy ass Connor was like, "Well, let him wrestle." I'm like, "No, I can't let him." It, like, and then another kid went to a match, and he had like just joined like two weeks late. He was a heavyweight, half black kid, just a big or kind of tough kid. So he gets in there, and he went to one practice, and the match started, and he starts going like this, like squaring up, but like a, like Nick Diaz fighting, and and the ref looks at me like, "This is what you're teaching these," and I'm like, "You can't hit him." <laughs> You can't hit him. And like the fucking, the refs, like, shouldn't that have been already established? You know, like, anyway, uh, enough about me. We'll go back into this because I have more stories. We have a guy uh, from Wales. This dude is 10 and one. Um, and the fight he lost, I, I watched it again last night. You could argue that he won that fight. It was a very, very close fight. 
This dude's a black belt in judo, in jiu-jitsu, and in uh, taekwondo. Kickboxing. And kickboxing. They added wrong. Kickboxing, yeah. Black belt in kickboxing. And all three things. He was a two-time Cage Warriors champion, which is the promotion over there, in two different weight classes. Mason Jones, how are you, man? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm a big fan, man. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Thank you, man. Well, I'm a big fan of yours, dude. I, I had no idea. And the thing about you, man, is that you uh, was in all kinds of research about you. So you started playing soccer when you were a kid. Yeah. But all you wanted to do was fight people. Like, literally. Yeah, so, like, ridiculously. Um, like, my, my dad used to take um, all of us, really, to, to soccer, which was sort of like something he just sort of did with the kids. Um, like, I'm from a small town. Uh, the population now is 5,500 people. So, um, like back then, there was, it was probably about 2,000. So, there wasn't really much to do. Um, so, like, like soccer or the UK football uh, was the only thing that was really uh, popular at, at, at the time. Um, so, he took all of us. And, uh, yeah, he didn't take me for long. He used to say, like, I was just an embarrassment um, playing <laughs> soccer. I was just trying to fight everyone and um, I was always the same as a kid like I said I was always like running around pretending to be um, like the UK they call them Power Rangers I don't know if you're out in the US yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah the cartoons like trying to fight everyone or I want to be a pirate or a ninja or I want to stab someone or fight someone or an army guy it was just always something to do with fighting they said so I was I did the same thing I, I played soccer I was terrible I led the league in like yellow cards uh, all I wanted to do was just tackle people and I had the whole team yelling "Rumble, Rumble!" like before the game. Like the, we were, we were the worst team in the fucking league. We never won a, a game. But 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 this isn't about me. This is about you. Your last fight. I'm, I'm gonna jump around because I have no organization. But your your That's last cool. your last fight. That kid that you fought was throwing some crazy combinations, like wild gang punches. And it, it must have been hard for you in the first round because I guess his his whole mo was he gassed in the first. But he was throwing punches from all different angles. Was it hard to find a guy to train with that was going to replicate what he was going to do? Nah, to be fair, we didn't really worry about why he was going to throw too much. Um, I think I had one, <laughs> um, I had one spinning elbow. Um, Cruz said when I watched it back, I had like a cookie. But um, it was just like, I, I did, where I, I did the kickboxing as a kid, we're used to people um, covering distance quite quickly. Um, like, because obviously the point style uh, kickboxing, that's what they do. Um, they blitz a lot and um, they throw a lot of wild stuff. And um, like, I grew up training with people like that. So the main thing was, was to deal with like long range strikers who was going to throw a lot of crazy stuff. Um, and like, for me, the main thing was just uh, to sort of not to rush the finish because it's so easy to get involved and sort of to push that finish too soon. And um, like my whole, the whole point of this fight was just, just to get our win. It was like... Um, we spoke about it before, and they said, look, don't try, uh, like you did the mic fight, don't try and get a big finish. Um, don't worry about sort of performance bonuses or anything. He said, just, my coach said, just focus on getting that win. So we kept everything nice, calm, and composed. And, and I stayed that way in, in the first two rounds. Um, the first round especially, I, um, I took big shots, and I caught him. Like, um, I caught him with a knee that split the eye early on. I caught him with a big right hand, and the uppercut just missed, but that glanced him enough. And, but after um, after I split his eye, every shot I hit him with, I could I could literally see him tremble. And like every time, like I hit him with a big hand, I, I could see that he just didn't want it. Mm. And um, after the end of that first, I knew I broke him. Um, but I just didn't want to go in rushing into anything and get hit with something spinning. Um, <laughs> obviously, he, he blacked my eye a little bit with a spinning elbow, and um, I had a big bruise on on my head. And that was from literally where I where I switched the double um, right near the cage. And sort of drove him down in the floor because I wanted to make sure there was no momentum shift. I like drove him straight in the floor and literally just drove head first into the cage and hit the bottom of the cage. Because I remember going back at the end end of the first round, going back to my corner, and I kept saying in my corner, oh, is my head bleeding? I was like, I'm sure my head's bleeding. And they were like, No, your head's not bleeding. Shut up, sit down and just listen. <laughs> ah. So um, yeah, it was it 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 was a fight I enjoyed while it lasted, but um it's it's a fight that like, even looking back, there's a lot of things I did that I, I, I really should have done better. Um, like, the end of the first round when he started, um, he started to stand back up. Uh, like, fingers in the cage or not, I should have literally mat returned him quicker. Um, like, even if I give it exerted a bit, if I mat returned him a bit quicker and sort of piled on the pressure, or even if I'd sort of just literally um, taken the back, um, rocked him down and just put a hook in or two and pressured forwards, 
like 10 seconds or so to go, I could have probably finished. Um, and in that second round, like, uh, as a, obviously a wrestling coach yourself, you know, if someone's down, they shouldn't be getting back up. Like fingers in the cage or not, they shouldn't be getting back their feet. So the whole reason that I poke happened was because I took him down and I let him get back to his feet. Like if I'd stayed in control and I'd stopped him getting up, then he would have been over in the second. So yeah, loads to work on. And that's the thing, when you, when you I poked him, which was obviously unintentional, it seemed like he wanted out. He knew he was losing. Now he wants to run it back. Do you want to run this fight back or no? Mate, to be fair, I wouldn't... <sighs> It wouldn't bother me too much if, if he randomly died at the moment. I, I really can't deal with even thinking about him at the moment. <laughs> like, not even the, the money he's taken off me. He's taken my foundation away because, like, this was going to be a win to secure my foundation. So, obviously, um, I fought Mike Davis. I did perform well. Um, and even though it was a fight of the night, for me, it was a bad performance on my behalf. Like, obviously, you've seen more of how I fight. I'm composed. I'm cool. And um, I use my feet a lot um, in the Mike Davis fight. All I did was put my head down and brawl. Do you mean then it was just sort of street rules? And um, Mike, Mike did really well in that fight. Like um, no matter how I look back on it, like I, I had Mike win in that fight. I know it was a close fight, and like the stats of this now that I had Mike win in that fight. Like I, um, I didn't perform. And um, leading up to this fight, uh, when I was asked about that fight in in interviews, I always quoted Derek Lewis. So um, when Derek Lewis fought um, Stefan Struve. He, um, he said after the fight, it doesn't matter, obviously paraphrasing, it doesn't matter if you perform uh, 10% of your ability or you perform 100%, all of that is winning. And in the Mike Davis fight, I, I didn't do enough to win. Um, this fight, obviously I did do enough to win. Um, I t the first round was 10-8 and the second round was looking like it was, I, it was either going to be finished or it was going to be another 10-8 round. Um, and like performance aside, that would have just a solid win would have really secured my foundations in the UFC. And like, I understand it's still a good performance, but I'm on a loss and in a no contest, it, it doesn't yeah, look good. First of all, you got fight of the night and Sean Shelby, they're not idiots. They, they, they know you won that fight. So yeah. I, I honestly wouldn't be too hard about that. I understand you're a perfectionist and you're 25 and you probably fucked one chick your whole life, but, but, but I'm, I'm telling you, okay. Be happy, not be happy, be content, but be satisfied. You kicked ass in that fight. You, you did. Oh, thank you very much. I'm Welsh, man. We've done some wild shit. <laughs> like, I, I, had, I had a good childhood, do you know what I mean? Like, even, right. even as, as, as a youth, I've, I've done some damage. But, yeah, no, I, um, I appreciate it. And um, to be fair, the, the amount of overwhelming messages I've had of support, and um, usually, usually when I fight, like, there's, there's a lot of negative messages as well. Like, always, same as everyone gets, there's always a lot of crap mixed in. Um, but so far with it all, I only seen one sort of uh, tweet or message that was targeted me. All the rest has been really positive. So, like I said, I think um, I think people are sort of seeing what was happening in, in there and, and they realize because like um, whether it's an excuse or not, like when I um, I caught him with my finger, um, I backed up quite a lot straight away because I knew I caught him and um, like I knew he was going to look for a way out and I, I sort of I sort of panicked a little bit where I should have probably just piled into him before the ref had seen. Um, which it, it isn't the type of person I am. Like I, I, I just wanted to win. I wanted to get a solid win. In well, don't thing, read but, the um, messages. You're too good for the messages, by the way. Don't read the messages. Uh, you're, you're, I, I always got to read the messages. You're, you're, a different, you're a different level, man. You're you're a different level. Uh, Bill, you're from Wales. You want to talk about some Wales stuff? Yeah. Well, I got my my D, uh, my 23 in May, and I'm like 34 percent Welsh. Oh wow! Hey, but do do you identify? What do you think? Scottish versus Irish. What do you feel most? You as and which country do you most identify with? Because Wales is like, like an island, and you got to be you, the identity in Wales is pretty like you know who who do you identify with? Who are your heroes? Uh, so with with the whole thing in 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 the UK, I always um I always just explain it as it's the same as sort of asking um, Americans and Canadians the differences between them, like um we all want to be like completely separate. So like the Irish got their thing, the Scottish got theirs and the Welsh got theirs. But um, I, to be fair, I, the Irish are fighting people the same as we are. Um, if you, if we had to be anything, we'd stay close to the Irish. Um, like back in the day, they sort of followed the same sort of pagan religions and stuff. And they had the same sort of mentality as us, which was we just fight everyone and don't really care about it. Like that was the way it was when we was all tribes and stuff. But yeah, um, Wales is, is wild. Like um, like I said, I'm from a small town um, right at the top of the mountains in Wales. Um, like all we've really got is, is sheep and a lot of rain. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, um, 
growing up, like my, my grandparents, um, they used to work in, in mines. And then um, if they were mining, they were either playing rugby or they were bare knuckle. Um, that was the sort of the two things they did. They were either scrapping or they were playing rugby or doing both. Um, yeah. Obviously, rugby is basically NFL without, um, without out the pads. And uh, they're slightly and- smaller, I think. <laughs> yeah no that's uh dude you're you're a badass bro now i i read that you're that what's crazy about you is like a lot of times people come from they come from nothing they're looking for a way out they become a fighter but your dad is like a huge investor uh you come from a lot of money um not not, not a lot of money I, I i do come from a bit of money but then um, like for wales i'm um i probably got middle class but then um, like the main thing on there is, is my dad's got his own um, big company that um, like my older brother works for. Um, my youngest brother sort of works from as well. Um, so like and my sister works from. So for me, the easiest thing would have been would have been to, to get a trade and, and start slowly start working for the company. But um, yeah, I just always wanted to fight. That's all I really wanted to do. I was either join the military or fight. And I'm colorblind, so the military was out from an early age. So. Um, we was like, look, I just want to fight. And um, it's something I really, I really push towards. And um, m- my father's big on that he, he would never pay my way. So this is a thing a lot of people get confused with. Like, they've seen a lot of things I, I did and I've sort of done and like, um, like training camps I've done and things I've sort of done. But everything's sort of been off my own back. Like, my dad's always pushed into me that like, if you don't have enough money, you need to find a way to make money. He said like people who sort of just reach for handouts all the time, they they won't ever make it. And, um, and like coming through the judo, the judo career, the path I did and seeing like, um, the Azerbaijans, the Kazis, the Russians and the way they grind for things, um, like is hundred percent. There's no such thing as being able to take handouts and sort of being given a place. So you have to earn every inch and, um, like watch, watch my fights. You'll see, like I'll, I'll have happily push and I'm told there's nothing left. Like I fought, broke my hand and I pushed through and you, you won't even know I've done that. You know, I, I used to think that like, that you could, you kind of can't teach heart. You know, I, it's almost like you have it or you don't. But also I think with fighting, it doesn't matter if you're Kenny Florian, you come from like a, a background investment banking, or if you're like the black beast, you seem like you came from a rough area. If, either you're like, either you have it in you or you don't. And yeah. uh, BJ Penn was for money too, right? BJ Penn, yeah. I think it's just, it's just something about that person. Obviously, Sometimes it helps when, like, I hate to say it, but, like, tragedy happens and you need an outlet. You know, like, like there was a kid that I was coaching whose mother uh, passed away from cancer, and the father pulled him out of wrestling in high school. And he's like, the father didn't like wrestling, and mom did. And, I, I, and it's not my place to call the father and, and tell him this, but I'm like, dude, that's the one place you want to keep him is in wrestling or in that kind of a martial art. Because all this uh, uh, anger and angst and shit that's going on in him, he's going to have an outlet for it and, a, and an outlet that you can't really explain. You know, you can't really explain judo and jujitsu and wrestling and just sparring because all this stuff's going through you that you can't really buy. It's just something that you just have to experience. Man, I'm, I'm for one, like I really do believe in like the way I grew up, like, like I said, like I grew up in a decent family. Like my, my parents are really good parents from what I, I know. Like, they, they raised me right. I've got good manners and I've lived, do you know what I mean? I've done some wild stuff, but we all sort of, we've walked a straight line. Like none of my family are in prison. We've all done well so far. We're going well. So um, like, I think we've been raised right. But for me, like fighting, um, if I, if I didn't have uh, a whole route to sort of exert myself, I, I would have definitely been in prison by now. And that's not saying like, like I said, I'm from, from a middle-class family, but like, the, the sort of anger that I dealt with as a kid. And like my, my, my parents literally, they've said from the age I, I could toddle, I, I, was, I was terrible. Like I had a stupid temper. Um, they said they, it was, they'd struggle to calm me. Like I was nothing like my brothers. I was always the same. Like my older brother, I remember um, my mother used to tell me that like when we was kids, she had the, they used to call me Houdini uh, because they, they put me in like, they got like childproof um, car seats and different things to sort of keep me in, in, in the, the chair while, while we drive. And they reckon I could get out of anything. I could get out of any crib. I could get out of any um, car thing. I'd climb the walls to get over things. I, I'd do the, like the, the adult, you know, the childproof um, wow. buckles on. Yeah. I could open everything and get out. And she said every two minutes, she, I'd get out. My brother would start to say, my older brother, look, he's escaping again. And then I'd jump on him and start biting him. <laughs> uh, they reckon he's a toddler. So, um, 
Yeah. <laughs> like I was just an angry kid. And for me, like I'm the, I'm the calmest person you'll ever, ever, ever meet. Like the amount of people I've met who, um, who always said, like they don't understand or they can see a kid like me fighting. And it's because like I, I always add that way to exert, that always way to sort of get rid of like the savage nature that, that all humans have. And um, yeah. I, th- I think it's a big thing. Like if, if a lot of people went in, into these sort of combat sports a lot more, then I do think uh, like a lot of things would, would be a bit avoided because it like you said, it's an easy way to overcome emotion. Like when my my my, my nan died, I stayed in the gym, I trained through it and um, it helped massively. Um when relatives and different things and we've had problems and different things come along, like my, my happy place is always be in the gym. Like I'm a completely different person after I train. And um like for me running or S and C um or like sports, none of it really did the same as Getting in into a war with someone or hit hitting pads and really sort of exerting that that is the way I sort of release. That's awesome. And, and basically, what about did you start judo first? Was judo your foray into martial arts or is it uh, kickboxing? Kickboxing. So um, I started kickboxing at seven. So like I said, small small town. So um, the only thing that was near was a kickboxing gym, and then um, I started with that. Um, it was like early. It was the early version of MMA. So the gym I trained at, um, Joseph Duffy used to train there. So Joseph Duffy was a lightweight in the UFC. Um, he's yeah. since retired. Um, Jack Marshman uh, started in the same gym. He's, um, he was in the UFC. Jack Shaw, Richard Shaw, um, and a few others who sort of made different Bellator cards. What about, what about, so, what about the other guy from uh, Wales that made the Brett. UFC? Yeah, Brett Jones. Brett from Swansea. That's, that's like the dark side of Wales. We just wow. let, let Brett slip over there. But then... Um, Brett, actually, I trained with Brett in um, my judo team. So Brett's dad's a judo coach, wow. um, Birdie. So um, I met Birdie and I met Brett when I was really young. So um, I started judo when I was 11, and um, I bumped into them around 12, 13. Uh, Brett was leaving the Welsh squad when I was really starting to, to come through. So um, before I ran on the British. Now, you went to Team Alpha Male, right? Yeah, six, oh. my sixth trip out. Now, what's that like? Because I've been a Team Alpha Male. I'm a, a part of those guys. That's a funny team. It's a bunch They're of brilliant. little fucking maniacs uh, who can kill. So there's a lot of big guys there now, actually. Obviously, you've got Cody. Um, Chad's sort of like retired. You haven't really seen Chad too much. Josh is recovering from an injury, Emmett. Um, Feely's a feather. Elegance is a feather. But then, like, there's a lot of guys there now who are actually quite big. So, like, Max Griffin trains there. He's a welder. Um, you've got Chris Gonzalez, who's a mate. If, if you haven't checked him out yet, he's, he actually does my head in because his social media is so bad. Like, he doesn't do any social media work himself, but he's on a tear through Bellator. He's like um, D1 level wrestling. Um, Sage North. Um, right? Is Sage there? Northcutt? Sage is there. Um, Sage is still sort of, um, he's recovering from a few different things. Um, and I think COVID sort of hit him out. So I didn't see Sage this time. But that, yeah, that, that guy's a freak. I don't, like, he's, he, Sage isn't human. He's too nice. There's, there's no way he's a human being. Yeah. Like, Sage is just. Like, when I first met him the first couple of times, like, me and my coach was like, look, there's no way he's that nice in person. Like, he's, he's like a serial killer. There's no way he can be it. But he is generally, like, such a nice person. And then he's just, like, god oriented and the Texan through and through and just a nice person. But, um, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of bigger guys there now. There's um, another wild weight who used to fight in the UFC whose name I'm terrible with. Well, there's um, Castillo. Uh, he's the coach, right? Castillo, yeah. I did some really good wrestling with Castillo this time. And then um, we got Chris Holdsworth, right? He's the coach. Holdsworth. Owner. Slava. So Slava is a Russian kickboxer who's like a world champion kickboxer. There's, um, and then there's like, a, there's a Brazilian as well who trains with Ricardo Ramos, who's, um, he's on the American cards. He's, he's a good Thai fighter and um, he's a feather. And then there's some of the guys from CSA who compete at Bellator who come over to train. So like, how do those guys, as, as a big guy, guy this like, so when you, like when you, when you went over there, how do they warm up to you? Was it was there, like, do you have to prove yourself? Was there like a, was there a chip on your shoulder? So the first time I went there, none of them would really train with me. Um, obviously, they, like, they're not like um, ATT and different gyms like that where they, they split the sessions. Like, the sessions are open. But um, a lot of, like, the, the UFC guys, the Belgo guys, they're really picky with who they train with, as, as you'd imagine. Um, so it took me a little bit, but I just sort of kept talking to them and all and sort of training with a few of them. And uh, gradually, like, after my second or third trip, they, they really... They, they already opened up. They realized I was there. That's just bullshit. Improved. I mean, you're going over there. You're a UFC guy. You're a black belt in three different art forms. And they know that wrestling is the one thing that you don't have as good as the other things, right? So the first time I went over there, I was 23 or 22. So um, I had made the UFC yet. I'm still on the cage warriors. 
I'd had like three or four fights in, three fights in, I think it was. And like, um, to be fair, none of them really asked about the, the judo. Um, I didn't have my BJJ black belt at the time. And none of them really asked about the judo. They just asked about the wrestling. And I was like, look, my wrestling's not that good. I've got a judo background. And they were like, oh, yeah, cool. Um, they didn't really <laughs> rate the judo I had. Um, but my wrestling was, was decent. Like, um, obviously, my, my basics were really poor. But um, the sort of advanced stuff they were teaching was just stuff I did with judo. So that was the hardest part for me because obviously the, the wrestling sessions they do, they wouldn't show just basic stuff. And um, my basics were really my weak point. Like um, my, my judo coach back home, who still corners me now, um, his sub-only stuff and his, um, his, his judo is unreal. Um, but it's just sort of, just like, like the, the head, arms, hands, hips stuff. You know, just really basic like just making sure you match the levels and that stuff I've done with Danny Castillo more than anything which you've really seen in this fight like I made sure that anytime he come in I made sure that one my head was in his face two my hips were lower than his and three that I made sure that I dug for that underhook and I made sure I killed his underhook um, and then also you've seen um, the the OG Gary the inner trip I did the second round to get him down like that's that's my judo background you know I mean like um uh, uh, like stuff like that is my bread and butter. So for me, no, hitting right. something like that was pretty much. That's the hardest part for people because, like, I coach middle school wrestling, and my yeah, I've seen who helped coach it. He's a he's a, he's a black belt in um in jiu jitsu, but he's like, dude, you helped me so much because people jump into wrestling classes and they're learning like you know two on one Russians, but yeah. but they're not learning single legs. Well, that was they're not learning that was a thing like. The, the two on Russian stuff I done in judo, like um, that, that my coach, um, my judo coach had a Russian coach, um, Val. So um, we all, we learned more Russian style than anything else. So like um, uh, we was doing loads of Uranagi stuff, which is like suplex work, uh, Russian two on ones, um, sort of um, breakdown stuff to the deep, uh, to the belt, um, like old washi stuff, like all lifts and stuff from, from body wrestling. So I learned more Greco than anything else. Yeah. So um, like traditional like wrestling, which is just traditional like blast doubles and, singles and stuff like the only sort of stuff i done with that was from a grappling coach i had when i was a kid who taught freestyle in the uk and freestyle in the uk is literally the difference between blood and um and piss basically do you know what i mean it's completely <laughs> completely yeah. different things yeah well that, that's, that's really cool. leg? what was that bill may you ever go for a double leg like a standard <laughs> yeah yeah so um, i used to do a lot of doubles but um uh, like back in the day, I um, did some damage to my shoulder, so I, so I I prefer singles a lot more now. Got it. Yeah. Now, now, um, now, but when you're going live though, when you go there, right, and everyone's like, "Oh, who the fuck's this judo guy with the stupid accent?" Right. <laughs> but then you're going, then you're going live. Are you just throwing your eye of favor on his head? And then are people at the gym like, "Whoa!" Like, are they like is everyone stopping and then looking at you? Is that kind of the how general? It nah, yeah. um, the like. <sighs> Uriah sort of, he teaches more than anything else now. Like, he'll, he'll mix in for a bit, but he mainly mixes in for um, BJJ. And, like, that guy is, is ridiculously hard to come close to in jiu-jitsu because he's so, like, he, he's, he's a power dwarf, do you know what I mean? Like, he's small, compact, and he just explodes everywhere. And he's just so aggressive at what he does. Like, if you ever see him teach, he is the most, like, he's so aggressive. And it's the wrestling style, do you know what I mean? Like, the way he shows everything is just sort of, like, it's a lot of power and a lot of explosiveness. Same as Danny Castillo teaches, but um, like more than anything else, he was sort of like I trained with a lot of the good wrestlers or the guys who were sort of who were there who was like legit wrestlers, and, and a lot of them struggled to take me down. And um, it was just like I'm the judo stuff. I'm, I'm quite good at basing on, on on my legs, and I'm quite good at getting back to my feet. So um, for me, like that was the main thing. It was just sort of like like I love striking, and I I, I got good wrestling defense. It was working more my offense wrestling most of them. But um, after after my first trip there, like I said, they were sound, and um, we really started getting a mix. And um, a lot of the boys have helped so much. Like this camp, um, I, I trained a lot with Chris Gonzalez for it, and um, like he's a longer lightweight with good wrestling. And like all I said to him was, look, I'm going to come at you with as many strikes and try and control the distance. Just keep taking me down. And I'll try and get back to my feet. And that's that's what we did for the camp. That's and great. um that's great i think i i stopped him taking me down like twice in the, in the entire <laughs> in about seven sparring exchanges that he, he did a proper entry but um do you mean we, we improved every time and uh like i i really don't mind being the anvil as long as um i get conditioned in the end and i'm improving so now what happens with the hot girls it's alpha male like Paige van zant goes there she dates cody and then she dates andre feely i think and then she ends up marrying austin right and then uh cynthia cavillo was there and then she left. Uh, Sarah McMahon was there, and she took off. What do you? What's going on there? What? What? 
talk to me about this. Make their women fight this. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. My girlfriend's a woman fighter. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's Olympic Taekwondo. Um, she's done a lot in her career so far. She's had a little bit of an injury break for, like, uh, this is her second year now where she's starting to come back. But, um, like, she's a woman fighter. Like, they are all absolutely batshit insane. And um, I, I've had this conversation with Chris because the better looking women fighters are, the crazier they are because, like, obviously, I, I know there's that always that the better looking girls are always the craziest scale. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. With fighters, even more because, like, like Paige, Paige is a stunning girl. So, how crazy she has to be to actually fight and, and put it on the line. Do you know what I mean? Bare like, knuckle. You know, Bare knuckle. You know, she's next. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. 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 Okay. That makes more sense. Uh, now, but like, <laughs> you, you guys should make them kind of contract saying they have to stay there because. <laughs> They go there and then they all leave. Like well, I'm like, what's yeah. going on at Alpha Male? Is that that's that's Uriah as well? Or Uriah is chill because like um, obviously with me, I, I I train there a lot. It's like I said, it's my sixth time I've been out there, and um, I'm gonna try and make sure that my roving camp, so I do my my camps there a lot more, just because the sparring and different things. And um, like Uriah has never tried to tie me down with a contract. He's never tried to sort of talk to me about money. Like this time I spoke to him, he said, "Look, he said you're, you're part of the team." He said. Um, he said, fight out of wherever you want, he said, and, like, we'll cut you team fears. So uh, he really sorts me out. And, like, um, like whenever I've got stuck with different things, like especially when um, I was coming through when I was short money, different things, if I was ever stuck with money that I needed an emergency, um, which happened, um, which I'll tell him about in a minute, he's literally just turned around and be like, look, here's, here's the money, like, just sort it out, and we'll sort it in a minute. That's awesome. Now, who's your girlfriend? Uh, Madison Davis. Yeah, she's a Taekwondo champion? Olympic Taekwondo, yeah. So she oh. um, she medaled Olympic qualifiers and she medaled the Commonwealth Games. She was part of um, Team GB uh, Olympic team, um, and like I said, she's been out uh, like this is her second year out now. So she's still recovering. Is she gonna do MMA? Yeah, yeah. She um, I don't know about the MMA. I know she's going back to Taekwondo. Like um, she's just turns twenty two on Saturday, so um, she's just coming back. But um, I don't know. We'll see. Like I, I'm happy for her to do her MMA, but it's all up to her. John Dodson just joined us. Uh, you made a face at her being 22. Is that too young? He's only 25. This kid. No, no. I didn't make a face about that. I was making a face. <laughs> and trying to make sure I can pop up my phone. Oh, so I can okay. Talk. Oh, okay. Like, oh, what the hell? There he goes. Yeah, I'm using scissors yeah. and a candle. Now, John, have you, met, <laughs> have, you met, have you met Mason Jones before? No. Hey, John, I'm a big fan. Big fan, oh. man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I love the fact that you, you still think I'm amazing. So he, uh, Mason is Mason is ten and one. Uh, he was a two-time Cage Warriors champion. He's now uh, one and one in the UFC. I'm calling that a win. I don't care. Uh, he's also a black. I got DQ, John. I got DQ. What? He got For DQ'd. what? Tickle somebody? DQ'd. Yeah, no. But what'd you do? Did you tickle him? I poke. It was yeah. Second round, I poke. Hey. <laughs> yeah, he he was winning though. It seemed like this guy against Alan Patrick. Seemed like the guy wanted out of the fight. Like he was. Oh, uh, okay. You know, and the guy was, uh, you know. Well, there's a lot of fakers in, like, at the 135 division. I mean, I'm just saying. In the UFC, there's a lot of actors right now. So, by the way, so John Dodson is one of my favorite fighters ever. Uh, you're a guy, you won the Ultimate Fighter. You kick ass. You got a fight you're coming up. You, fight, you got a fight coming up. Talk to me. Who are you fighting? Where? When? How can I watch it? Talk to me. I'm um, fighting uh, out in South Carolina on a show called XMMA. They brought me in to fight uh, Cody Gibson, so I'm like super ecstatic about it because of the fact that I get to go punch somebody in the face. Like, I've been trying to go ahead and fight like uh, Horiguchi for a minute, and I was like, hell yeah, let's go ahead and do this. And then that never uh, happened because, well, Japan just doesn't like Americans just yet. They, they, they think our coronavirus is a little bit too serious over here, so they're pushing the fight back. But we're we'll seeing how it goes. And in the future, I'm going to go ahead and beat up somebody. Good. Now, are you? How's your weight? Because sometimes you would get up to like one ninety, two hundred pounds. No, I get up to like a good one sixty eight, one seventy ish. Um, yeah. like, um, me splurging on a whole lot of pizza, and you know, I got a real front turtle shell all the time. <laughs> but 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 now you're good. Are you uh, being smart about it? Yeah, I'm being smart about it. I'm on my way. I'm making sure I can stay on task. I'm having. I haven't broke a hundred and fifty two pounds. So I'm like, all right, that's going to be awesome. I can stay at this weight class. I can go ahead and maintain it. I want to stay pretty much physically strong and be dominant throughout all this, and then I'm just going to punish this dude. Like, he's a no, tall guy. Awesome. He got fed for last time, or was one of his fights that he had. So we have a mutual opponent in common. 
Now, he, he was the guy, by the way, real nice guy. He's, he's a school teacher now. He, was, he, won, he won last four to five. He was when I was in a bar fight that said, Google me, bitch, to the guy in a bar fight. Yeah, he yeah. Got, it was all over TMZ uh, a couple years ago. And he actually lost the bar fight. Well, he, he basically let some, <laughs> he let some guy punch him in the face. Yes, he let some guy punch him in the face. And then the, he told the guy, I'm in the UFC. And the guy's like, no, you're not. He goes, Google me, bitch. The guy cracked <laughs> in the face. And then he came back and, and then low singled him and then beat him up. But it was like he almost got fired from being a uh, school teacher for that. Uh, he's a really good dude. He happens to be a really good dude. But uh, you could actually Google uh, Not if he's sitting there telling people to Google him. Like, Google me, bitch. <laughs> Get some of this. You don't know who I am. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a, a, a bad night. He, 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 had, he had a bad night. Now, um, how are the kids? You have two daughters now? I got two daughters, and my son is nine. Son is nine. Uh, and he just got his first cell phone, and he doesn't know how to text people back because he thinks that it's only used to play video games, and I solely blame that on myself. Of <laughs> and, and by the way, I think that them, you, not, you getting cut from the UFC was total bullshit. You, you, were, yeah. you, you, were, you won, uh, you only fought the best guys. And Nathaniel yeah. Wood was the last fight they seen of John's. Nathaniel yeah. Wood, that was his last win, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember that was the fight I watched, because obviously I know Nathaniel through Cage Warriors, and um, mate, that was a good performance. You looked good. Thanks. Hell yeah, so I, th I thought, when I got to fight with Andy Woods, I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about dropping back down the weight. I'm going to go fight a flyweight. Like, I'm all, I've only lost twice at flyweight, and I was like, this would be a better run for me to go ahead and start making, a t go for a title shot back that way. And then Ray Borg didn't go ahead and fight Marbib. He's like, hey, we need somebody to fight Marbib. Do you think they should be able to do it? I was like, cool, well, just as long as I'm allowed to go back down to flyweight, I'm going to go ahead and go make a, a title run, another title run on it. Like, I know I can be the champion. I'm like, all right, okay, cool. We'll see. I was like, all right, whatever. Fought my B, and I just kept on focusing on that dude's wrestling ability, and it stunned me. And I was like, oh. I literally got frozen up because I was worried about getting taken down so much that I didn't throw my hands. All right. It's, now, and then that, I told, now you were oh, you were a two-time state champion wrestler in high school. Yeah, uh, but this is the set records, though. I mean, how many times have you really seen me take anyone down? That's what I'm. Life? That's my fucking point. Okay, it it does seem <laughs> like you got a little bit too. You love knocking everyone out. And you kind of started becoming a little bit just like heavy handed some of these fights. Am I right? Well, not exactly. So what I did is like, you should, when I first started, I would always go wrestle and jujitsu only. I have like my, my first five MMA fights. I have nothing but submission wins. Yeah. So I would take people down, ground them out and just start subbing them. And then my first loss is because I had full mounts of some people, had their backs, had side control, had pretty much a dominant jujitsu game. And I lost for a fight in Colorado, Canada, Japan. All those fights I just lost because I was out grappling them, but they didn't count. My grappling ability is dominating when I have a, the total round, like when I had total control of the round was 13 minutes. Fuck. And it's kind of weird to lose a fight like that. Yeah. So I just stopped and then negated that and I went straight to striking and then they're like, hey, you need to start mixing in the jiu-jitsu and everything. I was like, okay, I can, but if I'm not getting hit, what's the point of Actually, going to somewhere happy, else. Isn't there a happy medium that you could find, though? There, it was, so there was no happy medium. There was like, oh, I can go ahead and take people down, but if I'm not worried about getting hit, getting like, yeah. getting touched, then there's no point. But you get but, punched. To be fair, as well, you've got some of you've got some of the fastest ha fastest hands I've seen at Bandam. Like um, the vo the volume output you put out has always been ridiculous. Like um, yeah, it's always been ridiculous. The, the amount of volume you just sort of managed to put out in, in, in the striking is it's just ridiculously fast. Man, thank you. Shoot, I'm going to be – right now, you, you're going to make me watch you all the time now. I'm gonna <laughs> you, you hype me up like this. I'm like, fuck, yeah, you got a new fan. I'm, Let's go. Now, one of my favorite fights was when you knocked out uh, TJ Dillashaw. Uh, oh, that, was, yes. that was before TJ became champion. Were you surprised when he got busted for EPO? No. Nah, I wasn't surprised at all. Why was he offering it to you on the show? No, <laughs> actually, Caraway was telling everybody that he was on it on the on the show. Oh, Caraway so was. Yeah, Caraway was sitting there saying that he was on some other stuff. I was like, mm, he's if he was, he'd be a lot bigger. Wow! <laughs> Can you so usually funny. tell when people are on stuff something that's obvious to another fighter? You're like, you know, ah, this guy's fucking juicing. Fuck uh, yes. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Yeah, because you know, they have like every. Like, that road rage is serious, but at the same time, it's road rage with, like, 
anger or issues of being a fighter and they just explode. So it's like a thousand times what you would expect like a lifter to have, but then they're like, just want to fight everybody. Anything can set them off. You can be like, hey man, you look good today. What the fuck did you say to me, bitch? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. I just said I liked your hair. What the fuck is wrong with my hair? Oh, fuck you, fuck you. I was like, holy shit. Wow. Did you get possessed by somebody? <laughs> Got it. Now, now you started your own camp in Albuquerque, but for little people, is it like a mini camp? <laughs> it is like a mini camp because, like, you know, um, I took the ideas of Tam and I made it just to be like jam. And it's like, not like Team Alpha Male, it's just like John Elite Midgets. <laughs> But isn't that what happened though? I'm not, wait, I'm not kidding. Didn't you kind of do that? Didn't you start like a Legoland about like that? Like Legoland. Like, is, is that what happened? No. Oh. I was like, I was running with what you said. I was no, like, no, I, I thought you did. You, did you start your own version of of Jackson that you headed it over in like a different part of New Mexico or something for? No. Uh, no. Oh. No. I really train at my house. I have like a little like shed. Okay. And it's it's like a big old garage. We sit there and I just set up mats in there and I have a bunch of people that come in through. And like, we get a lot of our technical training here and then I just spar with everyone at the gym. So wait, so you're not at Jackson Wink anymore? Yeah, I'm, I'm at Jackson Wink, Jackson Acoma, uh, BMF Ranch, wherever I like to go ahead and hang out and just be okay. around other people being stuck in my house. So what happened with Sanchez and, his, and that guy? I have no idea. But you saw the whole um, thing, right? I saw... Him being a douche, like Diego, like anytime Diego was around me and he had that dude, Diego wasn't allowed to talk. Like that guy was his voice for everything. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I tried to have a conversation with Diego. I'd be like, hey, D, how you been? And then he'd be like, hey, attention's over here. Like, cool. Why are you controlling his voice? Like that's kind of awkward. Did you become a trail quiz? <laughs> I'd be like, and every time it would just be going through, and I was like, yo, man, like. I want to talk to Diego. He says, well, you can't talk to him right now. Like, oh, my God. Well, I've known him since 2002. Uh, I think I can go ahead and talk to the man without you telling me I'm not allowed to because I don't think you're his dad. Right, of course. So, uh, no, I'm good friends with Isaac Valley Flag. We know that for a while he was doing meth and almost robbed a bank and was caught with, like, shotguns. Uh, now he's okay. He's, he's, like, sober. He's doing yeah. great. But were you around for all that? With Isaac? Yeah. I was, but I didn't know it was that bad. Because I thought, Isaac was like, hey, you want to go train? I was like, yeah, let's go. And he was just my level of happiness. So I was like, oh, hell yeah, he must be eating a lot of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> or drinking a lot of rock stars. So, so, I mean, you weren't surprised. I mean, were you surprised when it came out in the news that he was with, with a shotgun and meth? <sighs> I was surprised that he had the meth. <laughs> Absolutely, but the shotgun. I mean, I got one in my car. Like I'm not gonna be. Not. I got that and some knives. I'm like hell no. Nah. Somebody gonna car try carjack me. They gonna have to <laughs> their, their life. Well, they're not gonna know you're in the car, right? They're just gonna. <laughs> well, no, because they're gonna. Yeah, they they're literally gonna <laughs> sit on top of me and then I'm gonna stab them with a the knife. I'm like why you sit on me? Like boom. Of, co of course. Yeah, now, now, now were you in the gym when John Jones was underneath the cage hiding from Usada? Oh <laughs> fuck it out. I have no comments on that one. You were there. Uh, <laughs> Fuck, you were there, really? Yeah. Bro, I taught at the gym from 4 a.m. to 10 o'clock at night. So you were there the whole time. So the Usado comes oh, and, and then John Jones says to you, hey, uh, I'm going to be under there. And does, does he point under the gym? And do you like distract him? And, oh, like, hell no. Was, and so, here, so what happened for that? Like, I literally decided to take a nap. And I was like, cool, I'm going to go to the office. I'm, I'm passing out. I've been here since 4 o'clock this morning. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, hey, man, you seen John? I was like, <laughs> I was like me? They're like, no, not you. John. I was like, motherfucker, y'all keep on saying that. I just woke up. I just, you guys just woke me up from a nap. Uh, I'm right here. They're like, no, big John. Like, have you seen him? I was like, I haven't seen him. And I was like walking around. I was like, man, hey, John. Said, I think John, it's like, it, it Bones is here, man. Like, what the hell's wrong with you guys? Is it, like, did he show up? They're like, no. And they're like, uh, John, yeah. I was like, what? Like, yeah, John is, Bones isn't here. I was like, all right, cool. So I'll go back to sleep. Told that you said I gotta go leave. And then, like, literally five minutes later, I hear, is he gone? I was like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> God? 
I'm looking up and everyone's like, nah. I was like, <laughs> you've been under this whole time. Why didn't you just go through? Like, somebody could have took, like, pee. Like, you could have just peed. I was like, nah. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm pretending like I'm going to deny everything. So I just went back to the gym, back to my office, fell asleep. I was like, nope. Mm -mm. I'm pretending this is a bad thing. <laughs> it didn't happen. Like, uh, yeah, I was like, I'm right, pretending this didn't happen. Sorry to interrupt. I do have to go. It's um, 10 to 9. I need to cook. So um, I do apologize. Yeah, I, I, have to take care, man. I'm still in the UK. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, who's cow? All nice right, man. You have a good one. Too soon. Nice meeting you all. Cheers, bros. Bye. Thank you. Cheers, Bye. That, that is the funniest story. That, like, all of a sudden, you hear a voice from underneath the cage. Because I heard you were living there before there. Like, that I wasn't, was I wasn't living at the gym. Technically, like, oh, no, it, I, I felt like I was there. Yeah, like, yeah. I felt like I was living there at the gym because of the fact that I didn't leave ever. Like, I was trapped. They're like, right. John, you got a four o'clock class. I was like, okay, how many people is it? Am I teaching two? It was like, I'm waking up at four o'clock in the morning to teach two people. It's like, okay, I'll be here. Now, now, when Cerrone said that anyone could just walk into the gym and train with Holly Holm off the street th that, and like roll with her, uh, like, that's not, that wasn't true, right? Because I feel like if there would be a line of people ready to roll with Holly Holm, if that was the case, there'd be like, uh, you know, 4,000 people outside the gym. So when, so he wasn't, he wasn't wrong, but it was like still like the cowboy version of it. Like if you paid the gym membership and you can go ahead and pretend like you had some actual type of credentials because they weren't really checking, it wasn't like, how Ricky Cotton said he was when he was running the gym when it was just Jackson's. Like Ricky right. would go out, make sure he would like select certain people they had the record of and they had a certain amount of fights, the gym, uh, the credibility to actually give our guys like competition. Right. Then that was the case. But now anybody's like, hey, uh, I want to come train the gym. And they start piling in like, hey, okay, cool. And so we only had pro classes. So we had a heavyweight class and lightweight class and anybody that was coming into lightweight class they would go with whoever so they'll be like all right cool hey what is your first day here okay cool we'll train and then we'll just be training with some random dude that's never had any experience with games. Like, and I was like, oh my god what why are you even in this class I just, oh i just paid my membership and i i just thought it would be cool to i was like no 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 go sit your ass down <laughs> i'd get so mad i'd be like go sit down go, no you you see where those benches are Park it over there, take notes, and then you can learn later. Well, I was like, technique classes tonight. Go take that class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course, dude, of course. Now, I mean, because that's how you're going to get hurt. If some fucking yeah. guy's going to show up and, you know, not know what he's doing and then kick you in the ball or whatever, you're going to fucking pull an ACL or something. I get kicked in the balls every day. Let's it it's, it's, be realistic here. Of course. I don't just get kicked in all my fights. I get kicked in the gym, too. And they're excuse me. The oh, you always do get kicked in the balls at every one of your fights. Mm -hmm. I, that, that is very true. Now, Clay Guida, I heard everybody beats him at the gym. Like, everyone from, like, the, the 105s to the heavyweights. But in the fights, he beats everybody. It, it, so here's, my, here's my thing on that. Because I think Clay is actively, like, trying out new things. That he's like, all right, I'm going to try this out. And then it doesn't work. And then he goes, okay, cool. And then everyone's like, man, like, I fucked up Clay. And then all of a sudden, they're like, man, I, maybe he's not going to win this fight. And then he goes out and just demolishes the dude in the way. Where was that? He's like, and yeah. Clay's always, his main thing is like, oh, I wanted to try this new thing. And I'm just like, you know, I got really excited because like, they showed me at a practice day and I wanted to work on it today. Like, right. not yesterday, but today. I was like, oh. Is that every time we go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, like, that's like you as a comic sometimes. You smash the headliner, you do open mics, you fuck around, try a new job. You I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because, like, you guys are always sitting there creating new things, and you're like, oh, okay, so that one didn't work. Mark that one off the list. Right. <laughs> the problem is in L.A., people go around be like, oh, that guy sucks. I saw him at a fucking Bill's photo fucking hut, whatever. And you're like, yeah, I was working on a whole new, like, yeah, come see me when I headline. Anyway, but Bill, what were you, exactly. you going to say? Well, I was like, John, John, man, you have, like, one of the best personalities in fighting, period. Why are you out doing more TV or stand-up comedy? I mean, fuck Brendan Schaub. You'd be ten times more f him. One thousand percent. It's because I don't know how to slow down and talk. <laughs> Neither do you. It still work. Yeah, yeah. Of no. course. They're gonna be like, "Oh man, you're like a faster version of like Kevin Hart." I was like, "What the fuck did you just say?" Is it because we're just short black <laughs> people that all not just assume that we associate together? That's how we congregate. Well, you kind of sound like him. Oh. 
It's because I have his voice. I get it because I screech when I yell at you guys and then I try to go ahead and just ring, like pull it back and it doesn't work because then aggression sets in and then I want to go ahead and be like a DL Hughley and just start bashing the entire audience. That was my favorite version of DL, by the way. When he was uh -huh. in Kings of Comedy, he, him and Bernie Mac are my two. Bernie Mac is my favorite comic ever, one of them ever. I mean, he was so good. Uh, oh, him, yeah. and Rob, him and Robin Harris, another very underrated comic. Um, now, 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 John, uh, you fought Peter Yan. Did yes. were you surprised with how much Peter Yan dominated Sterling in that fight before he lost because of the whatever? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm. I don't understand how people so like dominated. What was he saying? Uh, Bill, am I frozen? Fuck. Uh, hello? All right, I'm gonna try to get everyone back on. Uh, uh, Do you see right. me? Uh, you're back, I can see you. Oh, okay. okay, no, wait, I'm still here. I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, okay, you, so you wanna be honest with me. You don't understand yeah, how- Yeah, so be honest with you, I don't understand how people are getting like physically dominated by Peter Young because of the fact that what me and him fought, I was like dog tired. I, I didn't get no sleep. I was trying to stay up and I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, sleepy, sleepy time. Like, <clears throat> and I did, I dropped him. I did find out, I did all right against him. But at the same time, like these other dudes are getting their time zone right. And they're already trained. Like he didn't hit that hard. He's not really good at wrestling. And then when Aljo couldn't take this dude down, I was like, I took him down. <laughs> and then he stopped my league from taking him down by grabbing my hair. You know, I had that bushy locks. Yeah. He was controlling me by my hair so, he, so I couldn't get no takedowns. So I was like, you guys are all like better wrestlers and better strikers than me. You guys should be able to go ahead and do these things. Like, I thought Aljo was actually going to be able to piece him up on the feet just enough so where he can go ahead and take him down. And then he never did. And then all of a sudden he got needed his face in. He won Oscar. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> that, that was crazy. Um, who do you like, by the way? Uh, TJ versus Sanhagen. That's going to be a good fight, but I actually got Sanhagen on that. And it's not because of the fact that it's like, I, I don't like TJ. TJ is just having that mentality with the, like all of his training partners. And it's going to be a reflection on him as well, too. They all lost their fights. Like Cus Watson ended up losing. Juan Archuleta. I don't know how, da how Dan did on the Ultimate Fighter. But seeing how their pace of how they train, it shows into their performances and they're probably getting burnt out. And I don't know if TJ's going to be on that same road where he's going to be burnt out of uh, going against Sam Hagen. And, and <clears throat> ooh, sorry. Because Sam Hagen's camp is actually very smart and seeing how well these guys are doing. So he's going to be able to pick them apart and piece them up from a longer range and distance, especially with TJ's and his you no know, hands protecting my face ability, you know, trying to hit that Bob and Wee thing. And that, what he did to Frankie Edgar was crazy. Oh, that yeah. Was, that flying knee was amazing. Yeah. Like, it was like perfectly timed and it was just. Beautiful. Uh, now, Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley. <laughs> what happens in this fight, Dotson? I mean, I really want Tyron to go ahead and just dust Jake Paul. But there's a reason why this dude picks out the fighters that he picks is because he knows that the ability that he's going into them, he has a sure shot way of winning. And it's gonna be that one that one punch knockout that Tyrone's not gonna be expecting. Like we already saw how Tyrone backed down from Jake Paul's trainer. Like mean, what makes you think that he's gonna actually sit there and not that dude's gonna have the mentality of pushing him harder to make Jake Paul a more vicious killer than Tyrone Woodland. Like it's gonna be a quick Love, match. Love has had twenty four fights and it was a you know, twenty I was like twenty three and one or twenty two and two. He's a good fighter, Jaylen Love. I mean, he was. Yeah, like, he is. But I'm just saying, like, Tyron didn't want no business with that dude. Like, did you see when he was sitting there talking crap to Jake Paul? Like, man, I'll, I'll fuck you. I'll beat you up. Blah, blah, blah. And and that Jaylen Love was sitting there talking to him. I'm not about that business. I'm about that life. If that was me with some dude barking at my face, I would have choked him. Or put my hand in my throat and just said, get away from me. I ain't talking to you, little boy. Even with, like, four guys, up. even when it's just you and the other four other guys, you would have done that? Oh, yeah. I do that in my day, normal day life. I don't even care. I get it. People, I have road rage. Like people go out and like cut me off. I wait patiently, follow behind them, get out of the car where there's a stoplight, walk them to, to the, get out of my car, 
walk to their glasses, like knock on it, be like, hey, you realize you just cut me off and I have my kids in the car. You want to die today. That's all I know. Like you, don't do it. John, John, people have guns where you live. Yeah, I got one in my car. I know. <laughs> you don't need to be, uh, John, you're, you, you are a fucking star. Okay. You're yeah, but when they shoot, they're going to miss because it's like shooting over my head. They expect uh, me to be way yeah. taller. They probably have bad aim and they'll they'll get you. Okay, so have you ever <laughs> started a fight, John? Start fight, recognized you. They're like, hey, let's go. They're like, oh shit, I know you now. So no, because like everyone always expects me to be taller. One and then two, they expect me to see a smile, but then they got like this angry smirk on my face. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna hurt you, and they're like, what? And they have to pull down the mask. I'm like, oh, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we got announced a couple days ago. Have you heard of the guy on YouTube, the real Hercules? Oh, no, the real Tarzan. No, he's like a There's black a guy, guy. Named the real Tarzan. Yeah, I guess he's a black guy who's a YouTube star who loves playing with like uh, tigers and lions and snakes, and like his whole thing oh, is wow. like he, he goes by the real Tarzan. This ripped dude. Anyway, he's boxing Vitor Belfort in two weeks. Uh, it's the real Tarzan <laughs> versus the real Tarzan is boxing Vitor Belfort on Triller uh, in two weeks. I don't even know if this guy can box uh, or what his deal is. I know he got arrested for like I think having too many tigers or something. He got into a fight with the with Carol Baskins or some some shit went down. But like we have the real Tarzan is boxing Vitor Belfort. Um, Bro, I'm an idiot. So my I went to grab my phone and I started searching my pockets. But you're on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, you're I on. I don't to do zoom off my iPad. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The real Tarzan is, is fighting. Uh, also, this Friday night, along with a great Bellator event and a great Invicta event, uh, but more importantly, Lamar Odom is boxing Aaron Carter uh, with Chuck Liddell as the referee. No um, way. Yes. Uh, I, Lamar I, Odom's definitely going to go ahead and beat up Aaron Carter. <laughs> so this is going down on celebrity boxing. Uh, I don't even know how I feel about this. Wait, what is it on? What, what's, what's the promotion? Where, where can you see it? It's on celebrity boxing. Uh, but so what I, I think it's a website or something. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to have to check this out because I'm going to be like, or, I'm no, be oh, no, actually it's on be like this on his arm. It's on the fight, the fight app. The oh, fight app. Yeah, it's on the oh, fight app. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, and then also Peter Guns is boxing. Uh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the guy who sings Uptown Baby. Uptown. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Peter Guns. That's why I was like, <laughs> why is he fighting? <laughs> Peter, Peter Frampton. No, yeah, I, was Peter. Like, I, I was like, I almost feel bad because I, I, I don't know if I should feel bad by him fighting or the, him throwing punches and then just like trying to be like Homer killing a fly on somebody's chest. Yeah, hold on. I want to show you if I can find the real Tarzan. Uh, who is the real Tarzan? Uh, yeah, he's fighting Vitor Belfort. That, I, I can't, it's Tarzan, it's, it's like two ends by the way, uh, Tarzan, but. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. he tried to make, it, make himself unique. Ooh, I, I got two ends in my name, I'm the original Tarzan. The black Tarzan, so it makes sense he added the extra N, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, we know why. I'm, because he's black. I, I, I don't. I, I, I know I, you I don't, don't really know. Sure I'm not really sure. I don't. Yeah, I don't understand why it's going on. Uh, Tarzan, I'm fighting people. He goes, we're fighting for animals. Um, his name is Mike Holston. Vitor Belfort is fighting the real Tarzan. It's in June. Um, it's on the same card as like I think there's some actual. Uh, uh, fights going on. Uh, there's actually some good fights. Also, uh, who do you like this week? Adesanya or uh, Martin Vittori? I don't know. And I really, I want Vittori to win. But because he's just, here's my thing. I want him to win because of the fact that he's dumb as rocks and he's going to walk forward and throw a lot of punches. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying like he's like completely stupid. I'm saying like he's just, he's like, he's going to throw all cautions to the wind. And just get as close to Izzy as possible and just start bombing on him. What we expected for Yoel Romero, but didn't do that to him, and no one did it. So he's been the closest one to do it. And since he's going to be better in better conditioning, have a little bit more wrestling, he's going to be able to take him down and control that fight that way. I think that one's going to be like the more deciding factor is that he's going to take Who's going to win? 
By the way, this is the real Tarzan. <laughs> that dude. <laughs> so yeah. I expected a black dude with long hair. No, no, this is the yeah. <laughs> the loincloth. This is this is the real Tarzan. He, I guess, he was arrested for battery, but I guess someone people broke into his house, uh, and then he like beat him up. Um, I think it'd be, it'd be kind of funny if like uh, he had like the animals working his corner, you know, like if his corner was like a baboon and like the real. Should he call it like the real Black Panther or something? Would that have been a better one? I, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I mean, he's older than leopard. I mean, he could have killed Killmonger. Uh, the real Tarzan versus Vitor Belfort. Uh, I, yeah, I can't. I mean, Belfort's got to win this fight, right? Good lord. Well, it depends how, how well he's how good his uh, steroids are. This. Oh yeah, the, the headline, they're on the under, undercard of uh, uh, Tiafimo Lopez, uh, who's a really good boxer. <laughs> yeah. How did that become a fight on that <laughs> card? <laughs> what the? I'm doing something wrong. Hey, tell me whatever YouTuber that wants to get beat up by a midget. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about Mayweather versus Logan about? Paul? I've been trying to call out Jay Paul. I was like, all right, if Tyrone won't take that fight, I'll go ahead and beat you up. Like, I will go ahead and dust you. Like, Mayweather beat up Logan. I mean, I guess I could do it to Jake. Now, um, Henry Cejudo called out Mayweather. You think he's got a shot? Right. That, was, that was not going to go through. No. Uh, but Mayweather wants a fight that's going to actually make sense and make him some money. And then him beating up, like, Henry Cejudo. Uh, I mean, it's going to be kind of like how what people expected. Jake Paul, I mean, Logan Paul to go ahead and do to Mayweather. That's really going to happen to Henry Zudo. He might actually be ahead. Uh, now, Rick so Ross. Rick, Ro Rick Ross has been training boxing. Um, he claims that he knocked out two pro heavyweights in the gym. Is there any? I wouldn't doubt it. You don't have to be technically good. You just have to hit hard. To be a heavyweight, like, I, I envy them because all they have to do is just do. And this as fast the punch is coming. So you think you think Rick Ross really did knock out two heavyweights? Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it because like it's all. Have you seen the man? He's a big dude. Like he just has to put a little bit of weight behind it and just throw a little bit of technique with that punch. Let's put anybody to sleep. That's a lot of force. I'm gonna show you some of his. Uh, let's see some of his uh, training. Tell me what you think. Tell me how how you think he's doing. Hold on, let me see how, uh, Rick Ross. Uh, share a screen. Here we go, uh, Twitter. Uh, all right, so here's Rick Ross um, sparring in the gym. What do you think? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I mean, I kept on saying the same thing about Deontay Wilder, and he ended up becoming a world champion. <laughs> Let's laugh song. <laughs> That was his, like, defining statement is why he couldn't throw punches correctly because he had flip-flops. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tito Ortiz has been offered 100 grand to fight two people in fight circus at the same time. <laughs> Are they midgets? <laughs> I mean, what kind of people want to fight Tito Ortiz? One, and how they're going to try to make that a handicap. Like, if that was the case, like, why didn't they let that fight between me and Joseph Benavides against Francis Nagano? Like, that's, <laughs> that would have been a better fight. Yeah. That would have been way more entertaining than Tito Ortiz being up two guys. Do you think you and uh, Benavides could take uh, Nagano in a fight, two-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, because I can definitely get him tired. He's going to be throwing a lot of punches, and he's not going to try shooting on me. We already know that. You don't think he would just yeah. knock out – you don't think he would knock out one of you, and then the, the other guy, like, that would – you don't think that would – so the way I look at it, it's like jump a rope, right? You can do good, do amazing with one rope, and then you can get that timing of it. But if you're not used to having a double Dutch rope coming at you, having simultaneous ropes, you're not going to see all the punches. It's a good point. It's a good point. Although I think I've been better at threesomes than I was with one chick at sometimes. I, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I have, I have ADHD and like focusing. No, that's when you just let them go ahead and please themselves and you're just entertaining. You're like, oh, hell yeah. And then it makes it sound, seem like you're lasting forever. You're like, yes. <laughs> It's a good point. Now, John Jones at heavyweight, it's so frustrating because he wanted to go to heavyweight. And yeah. he, went, he went to heavyweight, and he's looking fucking thick. He looks strong. And oh, he's I, huge. You know, I mean, 
I don't know, man. I, he's one of those dudes like Mayweather. I just can't see him ever losing. Uh, you know, it's like, and he's that good. But now he wants more money and he's not fighting in Ganu. Have you talked to him like, John, what's, what's going on? What, what are you doing? No, he solely trains at his house. So John doesn't go to the gym as much as everyone, everyone keeps on thinking that he does. He goes over there, take a couple of pictures make it, to make it like, look like he's active, but he's always at his house. Like he has a gym at his house that he trains out of and he makes sure that he looks like monstrous. And he, trains, and he has a bunch of people come over there and they're just doing what they need him to do to make him get bigger and stronger and faster. Wow. Now, does he, um, who does he bring in? I have no idea. I don't go to his house. Does, do I look like the size of John to be a heavyweight? <laughs> like, I can't get benefit that. Hey, John, well, yeah, aren't, throw, you guys, aren't you guys friends, though? Don't you guys, like, talk on the phone? Or don't you guys, does he call you for advice? Did we not just discuss this about my son has a phone and doesn't know how to use it because he plays video games on it and it's solely my fault? That's all I use my phone for, split games. So do you have any friends at the gym that text you, like, they need something? or? Yeah, yeah. but that's when they actually need stuff. When they need something, I go, I'm like, all right, cool, hell yeah, let's go. And then everyone else I'm friends uh, with is friends with my wife, so they just can't get hold of her because I know that's the best way to get hold of me. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> Finally, Bill, there's a girl fighting tonight. You got to see if you get PFLs on ESPN+. Plus. Clarissa Shields. She was yes. an Olympic gold medalist. She's the best boxer to ever go into MMA. You know, Holly Holm obviously was an amazing boxer. I think Clarissa was better, to be honest. Uh, the just straight boxing. What? Because I'm She's woke. the GOAT. Yeah, the GOAT. Yeah. The greatest woman of all time. Carissa, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just straight accolades. Holly Holm was a great boxer, mm -hmm. but Clarissa, I think, was on a different level. I don't know. Maybe I'm just more aware of female boxing than I was back then, but it just seems like, right? It seems like she had a different, she reached a different standard. Holly never won a gold. Um, they were both, I mean, Holly wasn't undefeated as a boxer, right? She was more of a, a kickboxer, right, or what? She was a she's more of a kickboxer, but she wasn't because she wasn't a pure boxer. She didn't go in there and start dominating in the boxing field because of the fact that they just couldn't keep up with her movement. Right. And she only got knocked out once. Right, and Clarissa never lost. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll say that she's the greatest uh, female boxer of all time. People will say Layla Ali uh, is the greatest female boxer of all time. Um, I'm not that well versed in female boxing to make the argument either way, but she's amazing. So she's yeah. she's trained in MMA now. You have watched this happen? She's been at the gym for what a year? Yeah. How does she look? Talk to me. What does she go? How's her ground game? What what are your what are your predictions? She's been working heavily solely on being able to understand MMA, so she's understanding the parts and get back to her feet. The urgencies are doing that. and I've actually been excited that she's been trying to incorporate a lot more kicks into her game. With that being said, though, I think that she's going to walk out there and just dust his chick and just hit her with a <laughs> clean straight right and break her jaw. <laughs> right. But how's her takedown defense? Uh, it surprisingly gotten better. So it's gotten way better than when she first started because she's actually a good athlete. But she can under – like when people try to explain things to her, like, hey, you need to control the head and do this, she looks at you with a blank stare like, what the hell did you just say? Like it's a foreign language. But then once she, when she sees you do it, then she can re emit like – Mimic it exactly. So she I, goes up, picks up things perfect, very quickly. She's got the perfect person helping her in Holly because that's the person yeah. who exactly what she's trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also, she's a different weight class. So it doesn't like she has to worry about, oh, I don't want to get this girl too good because then she's. Yeah. So I, I'm excited. Now, I, I think the PFL is trying to make Kayla Harrison versus Clarissa Shields. It seems right like away. they're going because both of them are gold medalists, uh, both two time gold medalists. They're both going to be undefeated in MMA. How do you see that fight going down? It's going to be, like, it's going to be interesting because it's going to be like that old time classic between striker versus a like great grappler. And like we already know, Clarissa is going to sit there and be able to go ahead and keep her at that distance and that range. But man, Kayla is going to sit there and try to hit that nice judo throws that she has been. She's been that's what she's been dominating all the PFL with. So I'm excited to kind of see what's going to happen if who can dictate what pace and how it's going to go. They're both mean too. They're both like mean, like not like in a bad way, they're but they're both fighters. Yeah. They have that fucking, that citizen. I'm going to kill you attitude. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. Bill, any final questions for the great John, the magician Dodson? 
hey, man, I'm serious. You're, you're one of my favorite fighters and one of my favorite personalities you have seen. I loved you on The Ultimate Fighter. And I just want to see you fight again, man. I want to see you back then. So I can't wait. When, when is your next fight again? Uh, fighting on uh, July 30th. July 30th. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Sure. Co co yes, and this is a good, is a good promotion. Is it going to be on Fight Pass? Is it going to be on? To tell you the truth, I have no idea. Like, they asked me if I want to fight this dude. I was like, yeah, don't turn down a fight. So let's go. Let's go ahead and do this. I'll take this one up right now. So. Co don't take him lightly. He's good. He's good. Oh, I have, I'm not taking him lightly at all. I just realized that he's like five, like five ten. So I have to be closing the distance a lot so I have to get in range of his punches. And then he likes to throw a sneaky elbow. So I'm praying to God that my height comes into like play at that moment when he tries to throw an elbow at his own head. It misses my head. By the yeah. way, by the way, Mayhem's out of out of out of out of jail. So he uh, yes. okay. He he uh, got out two weeks ago, and he's and he's coaching. Um, he told me he, he he told me you were his favorite student ever. So, oh nice. Hey John, I have a question. Yes. How many can you your back flip? Will yeah. you be able to do that forever? I don't know. I think I tell you the truth. I'm gonna be able to do it forever as long as I keep on practicing because my kids keep on telling me, "Hey Dad, we got a trampoline in the bag. Why don't you sit there and do it?" I'm like, I gotta get warm up. Now just go do it. So I have to practice it with them every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, John, so I'm gonna keep on doing it until uh, my legs fall off. Have a great weekend, John, and thank you for everything, brother. Well, no problem, man. You too. Best Thanks best. for having me on. Take care. That was the best. Fuck it. I love that guy, John Dawson. What a great guy. Fucking good He's dude. Amazing. Man. Yeah. He's just funny as hell. He's really funny. Like he has a personality. He should. He should do like broadcast shit more or comedy or something. A hundred percent. I may. I may have to take that clip of him. Uh, Talking about John Jones going, are they gone? <laughs> and just putting that. Oh, uh, that's true. You know, I, I may have to put that on Instagram. I feel like that yeah. would be a lot of hits. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Bo, thank you for everything, man. And uh, you're the best, brother. Thanks, man. Good to see you, bro. See you soon.